guys. I'm not having a good time. All the HDMI ports up there or somewhere have broken. Um, I think I've found a solution though, so bear with me for a second. And let's get that sorted. So I was just rushing around frantically because the HDMI splitter that I've got back there, for whatever reason, just won't turn on. I think I have some sort of curse. Anyway, let's go in full cam mode so you can actually see me. So my backup solution that hopefully is going to work, got the Super NT here plugged in directly to the computer with the HDMI cable instead. And the other reason I'm a little bit late is because I was darting around to try and find this. So we do have a way of playing Game Boy games now. Got the Super Game Boy 2, which hopefully I can put in here. And then hopefully we can start playing one of the games that I started to try and play last time, Infinitron, which didn't work. So fingers crossed it works in here. So let's switch back over to the game screen and cross our fingers and hope for the best. Yes, okay, seems good so far. I just realised I haven't put any of my lights on either, so... Let's turn that a bit. And... Oh no, I need to get my colour. Shoot. Well, anyway, let's put the lights on. Three. Okay. We have some background light anyway. Uh... I don't know whether the Game Boy 2 works with the PAL Game Boy. I don't think it does because of the way the speed reads from it. I think it's only the Japanese Game Boy. But apparently this game is not compatible with the original Game Boy, so we can't play that one. So that's my first idea out the window. Now, I do have something else that I wanted to show off in the stream. So let's pop back to phone camera for a second. And I brought the scissors out somewhere because I'm going to make sure not to show off my address, but... Another box just turned up, and I believe this one is Game Boy Homebrew related, so let's take a look. But yeah, as I was saying, if you've just joined, unfortunately the HDMI thing that I normally use for recording videos has, for some reason, stopped working completely. I don't know why it was working yesterday. Uh, but yeah, let's get my address off there, and then I can show it to the camera. Wow, they really do not want me to take the address off this. Ah, that is some tough cardboard. Right, okay. The address is gone, so you want to see what's inside the box? Live unboxing. It's only a small thing. It's, here you go, wrapped up in, in tissue with a little um, piece of sellotape on the side there. And more surprises, then we're going to open up this. So let's have a look in here and get this little bag open. And fingers crossed this one is original Game Boy compatible and then we can actually play it. So here we go. Here is a brand new Game Boy game by Incubate and developed by a company called EGS. This is Winged Warrior. There we go. Brand new Game Boy game. Straight from Canada. It turned up this morning. So, crossing my fingers and hoping that this is Game Boy compatible. Come on. Yes! We have a game. Can you hear it okay? I think I might need to turn it down a little bit. Or maybe turn my headphones down. Yeah, perfect. All right. So, yeah, this is a brand new game called Winged Warrior, which literally just came out. It just arrived this morning. So let's see what this is all about. So we can begin with three different characters, uh, Kai, Gaia, and Raiden. And I just realised before we start playing, um, I want to start recording it on the Mac as well, so I can use it in video. So, press record on there. Now we're good to go. So... Let's try Kai first of all. See what Kai's like. Wow, okay, that is pretty fast for a Game Boy shooter. That's really nice actually. 
And of course, because this is a Super Game Boy, what you can do as well is press the L and R buttons together and change the colour palette. So we have all these different colour options that we can that we can play around with. And you can also draw on the borders, which I maybe I'll have a bit of fun. A bit of fun later on. I read that as, oh, a crap shooter. It's like, hold on a second, we haven't even seen what it's like yet. Um, I'm going to put it in black and white, just for now. So that is... Is it on number two? Yeah, H on number two. I don't know why it's so far away, but there we go. You can actually see it a bit. More like how it should be presented. <laughs> yeah, I get it. You meant it as a good thing. I just read it wrong. Anyway, this is Winged Warrior. I got it today from Incubate over in Canada. So really excited to try this out. And wow, so far it seems really, really well polished. Very impressed. Yeah, I prefer to keep it in grayscale. Whoa, we even got proper boss fights with a health bar and everything. How cool was that? Pretty nice music as well. So yeah, so far I'm very impressed by this. And there's a bob as well if you press the B button. So that's cool. And a nice amount of attacks by the enemy there as well. And I'm actually playing this through OBS using the computer monitor, so... Good job there's no lag. Because I would have just died then. Hey, we got a, first, a few first time chats as well, so uh, go and pop. Somehow it's given me Phoenix vibes. Yeah, definitely very Phoenix. And we've also got a chat there from Ono oh Tom Sutton. Thank you. Nintendo. I haven't heard the name Nintendo in a long time. But yeah, wow, thank you everyone for taking up your Monday evening to come and watch me play these. Really appreciate that, as always. And I am really enjoying doing these streams as well. Even if I did, of course, have a load of technical issues, it wouldn't be a retro break stream without a host of technical issues stopping me going live on time. Um, for some reason, the HDMI thing that I used back there has just completely given up the ghost. And it's just unusable. Yeah, I don't know whether this game has uh, any... Game Boy Color or Super Game Boy stuff. Unfortunately, I can't use the GameCube to find out because the HDMI port on the other side of the room isn't working. So I just got the uh, the Super NT and brought it here for this. No, not not the upscaler, the actual HDMI splitter over there on the wall. It's not the upscaler that's broken. It's the actual thing that brings the HDMI over into the capture card. Oh, cool, we've even got little cutscenes. I don't want to hear your pathetic claims. Let's see who was right by fighting. That's exactly what I wanted. Come on. Wow, this is really good. This is like... This is what I wanted Dangan GB to be like. Like a proper shoot em up with stages and boss fights. Rather than just straight into the boss fights. So, yeah, very, very impressed. Definitely an expert coder, whoever made this. Oh, I've run out of bombs. But it seems pretty easy. I think I'll take them out any second. Oh, I was looking at the health bar on the side. Their health's on the top. Wow, well, okay, a lot of bullets now. There's a little bit of slowdown, but not nothing too bad. There we go. It's all good. Once a month, my mic will just randomly disconnect while I'm midstream. <laughs> well, I hope that doesn't happen. That would be bad. At least I can play something still. For now. So now we're on to level 3. And so far I've noticed there doesn't really seem to be any weapon upgrades, which is a little bit strange. I wonder if I'll see some uh, extra weapons a bit later on. And, oh yeah, for anyone who's actually subscribed here on Twitch, I know some people did the other day, I will be adding custom emotes and stuff soon, maybe some sound effects for the chat, but um, yeah, I haven't quite got round to it yet, so bear with me. Hopefully I'll do it by next week, so at least you'll get something out of the money that you've spent on the uh, subscription this time. So I do apologise that at the minute you don't really get anything special for it, but hopefully that will be rectified very soon. If I can convince my girlfriend to make me something. 
of course I'll I'll give her some of the subscription money or do something to say thank you. Yeah, sometimes the slowdown in bullet hell is put in intentionally. Which maybe maybe it is here. Because it helped get through that bit there, for sure. <laughs> yeah, you love the built in emotes so much. Do you get anything extra for subscribing at this point? Apart from the, the thing next to your name. Seems really easy so far, that's why I only, my only gripe with this. I do seem to be whizzing through these stages. And, uh... Oh man, just pause up for a second, let me open my drink. I think this is the first time that I'm not drinking alcohol on stream either. Just got a plain Vimto this time. <clears throat> you don't have to watch ads. Yeah, I haven't... Well, hopefully you're not seeing any ads anyway, because I did tell them to, to not play adverts. Because I didn't think I would get any money at this stage from the ads anyway, because of the small number of viewers. So I didn't really want to bother people with adverts if I could help it. So hopefully you're not seeing any. Uh, I don't really know what it's like from a viewer's point of view yet, though. Oh, there's some enemies coming up from the bottom there. That's new. Uh, yeah, there's a slowdown again. It does help when there's a lot on the screen. I am really impressed with the amount of bullets that can be on the screen at once though, especially coming from the player. They still play ads. Oh, in that case I may as well turn them on then. I'm just letting them get money for free at this point. I'll try it. I'll do that for the next one then. Sometimes like less but more accurate shots. Hmm. Yeah, I guess it's good It's good that there's both kinds of games on the Game Boy now, even in the homebrew scene. Like, there's there's Genesis, um, which is kind of a more methodical shooter, whereas this one seems a little bit more bullet hell. I also can't quite tell where the hitbox is for the player. Ooh, it's not there. I mean, or maybe there it is. Less from the enemies. Daddy Bezos wants his money. I don't even think he gets it anymore. I don't know who owns Twitch now. Oh, I died. Oh, what is up with this name entry screen? 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 That's really awkward. Nick. Okay, let's see what else there is. About. Programmer. Art. Music. I wanted to see what they programmed it in. I'm guessing... Oh, I didn't actually look at the other names on the screen. What were the, uh, what were the references? Oh, there we go. Ha! Okay, so we've got Dodon Patchy, R-Type, Sinanomora. Let's see what else. I don't know what M. Sama is referencing. Oh, Mushahima Sama, obviously. Yeah, there we go. I like that. I've got all of them. And language, you've got English, Spanish or French. Cool. Um, doesn't seem like there's any sort of uh, difficulty options, though. Yeah, I don't want people to leave through ads. I think Twitch pays out a tiny amount anyway, even compared to YouTube. So I don't really know whether it's worth it. Let's try one of the other two characters anyway. Let's try Gaia. I wonder if these are references... Okay, so the shot looks different. Mushef is your only 360 import. Do you have the um, Dodon Patchy Resurrection on the 360? I think my only 360 import is um, uh, what's it called? Tet Tetris Evolution. What's the arcade Tetris game? It's not Tetris Evolution, I can't think of what the name is now. Have you got the PAL version? Have you got Death Smiles? That's probably my favourite, shoot him up for the 360. I ordered Death Smiles 1 and 2 on the Switch ages ago and it still hasn't shown up from Strictly Limited. 
so hopefully that arrives at some point. Because I really love that game. I've never played the second one either, so that'll be fun. So far, I can't really tell what the difference is between the characters. But I'm still really impressed with how responsive the game is. Yeah, there we go. I was obsessed with Death Smiles when it first came out. Um, is it still recording? Yeah, it is. Don't worry. Yeah, I was obsessed with Death Smiles. I had like um, a flowchart to see what what endings I'd got and stuff, and I did get all all the achievements for it eventually. So I'm really looking forward to having it on the Switch. Being able to play that portably will be really cool. Not my favourite shooter from Cove, though. That's definitely Esperade. Which I got on the Switch when I was in Japan. In 2020. Just before everything... Collapsed. <laughs> and we still haven't been able to go back since. I was winding myself up earlier watching... Um, Akihabara documentaries. Thinking, oh, I want to go back so bad. I want to make my own documentary there. I'm so desperate to go back to Japan now, it's been too long. And yeah, I want to make a, a really good video about Akihabara. Like, obviously I've done the videos about all the game shops, but I want to do more of a... about the history and the culture of it, and... you know, its involvement in the retro gaming scene. Which I think would be a really interesting take on the general Akihabara videos that are out there online. Yeah, you should definitely go if you get the chance. I'm trying to think what that Tetris game is called. It's, it's up there on the shelf. I'll have a look at the end of this stage. I'm going to try and preserve my bombs because I think... You don't really regain the bombs. Well, let's find out. So it says I've got two. Let's see what it's like at the end of this level, whether they get refilled. I did just notice as well, there's no sound effects. I don't know how it took me this long to notice that. Not that it really matters, because it means the music's higher quality, because it uses all the same channels, but it is a little bit strange. I don't know why this pattern's so easy to dodge. <laughs> Japan, Blackpool, basically the same rate. <laughs> Hold on. I'm going to go and find out what that Tetris game is. I can see it up there and it's really bugging me. Oh! I haven't even... I haven't even opened it. Shall I do it? Should we do another live unboxing? Here it is. Tetris the Grandmaster Ace. There you go. 330 yen. That's like two pound. Something like that. Insane. I got it from Hard Off in Akihabara itself, which is known as one of the most expensive ones. Uh, but it's actually not that bad. So let's do it. Let's let's crack this open. Yeah, about two quid with the way the conversion rate is at the minute. It took me a while to get used to how yen like correlates. There we go. Fresh from Akihabara itself. There it is. Tetris the Grandmaster. Let's see if it's got a colour instruction manual. I've, oh, I did actually get to play the um the arcade Grandmaster game as well while I was in Akihabara too. In one of the arcades there. Is it colour? Yes it is. Wow, that is very rare for a colour manual for the 360 era. Well, I'm not sure whether the 360 is actually backwards compatible or not, so I don't know whether I can actually play it. It looks like it has some really nice backgrounds. Look at that. Tetris Effect before Tetris Effect was a thing. But, yeah, thanks for reminding me about that. I forgot I had it. Uh, anyway, I think there's some more games up there that I haven't uh, actually opened yet, anyway. Anyway, back to the game. Back to the game at hand. And I think I missed a chat there from Tom Sutton. Uh, in my last game, we only programmed music for three channels. We left the first channel free for sound effects. 
that's what a lot of that's what a lot of people do is leave one channel free. But I think, um, yeah, the bombs don't reset as well, so that's where the challenge for this comes in. I think the developers opted to try and improve the music quality in this rather than add in sound effects. Well, there's kind of sound effects, just not with the bullets. There's little blip, 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 little blips. Oh no, I had an itch. No, that's not fair. Game over already. Been picking up Japanese 3DS stuff. Ah, oh, I'm erasing all of the um, references. Let's think, think of another one. Um... Well, as his name was Raiden, we can put Raiden in. I'd love to do a stream of Raiden, the PC Engine version, one day. There we go. And let's try the third character, who is Raiden. There we go. Okay, so he's got a more of a narrow shot, and he also moves a bit slower as well. He actually seems to move slower when you're shooting compared to when you're not. Which is a really nice mechanic, that's how Mushihime, Sama and a few other cave games work. But I don't know whether that's intentional or whether it's just the slowdown from the bullets. Um, S Braid does that as well. Where when you let go of the fire button you move a bit faster. This seems a little bit too slow, especially considering the speed of the enemy bullets. So, maybe it's a bit stronger though, we'll see when we get to the boss. And I might go back to using the first character, because I guess they're the most well-rounded one. I'm not sure what those pickups are doing, if anyone's re if anyone's managed to figure out what the pickups are. Are they refilling my health or something? Or just adding to the points? Can't really tell if they're doing anything. Ah! Wow, I didn't even get past the first stage. Okay. And I didn't even get on the leaderboard at all. Let's try riding again. Yeah, I like the I, I like the idea of having the map on the bottom. That's cool. You can see your progress throughout the level. There's a lot of really nice things about this game. They've done a great job with it. In fact, I think this is probably the best out of the homebrew games that I've done for these. For these few streams. I've got some more that I want to play. Unfortunately, uh, for anyone who's just joined, I couldn't get the GameCube to work properly this time. Because maybe a fuse has blown in the uh, HDMI thing or something, but it's not powering on. So I can only play original Game Boy releases, unfortunately. So let's hope that the other ones are DMG compatible. Else I might have to think about doing something else for the rest of this stream. But at least we can play this one. Yeah, kind of like shot triggers. Uh, I really, I really hope they keep making the shot triggers series because they're so good. M2 really knows what they're doing when it comes to shooters, and you can definitely tell the difference, even with games from the same developer. Like if you compare, say, Espeluga on the Switch to Esprade, the difference is just crazy. How much better Esprade is because of M2's programming knowledge. It's like a night and day difference. And all the extras that they feature on the side of the screen as well, you don't get any of that with Esprade. Or Mushihime-sama. Okay, so I think... I think I just powered my shot up, although it's kind of difficult to tell. I think the bullets have got bigger. Slightly. Oh yeah, I was going to show off some other Game Boy, uh, Super Game Boy features. Let's um, let's have a look. So you can also put in uh, different backgrounds, different borders. So if you didn't just want the typical Game Boy on its own, you can have like palm trees or um, it's not letting me click it for some reason. You used to be able to draw your own. I don't know whether. There's only certain games you can do that with. Oh yeah, Battle Garrego. It's a shame that didn't come out on the Switch. You can have a pond. 
I quite like this one. The gears actually turn as well. Or they used to? Maybe they just turn if you leave it still for a while. But yeah, I always enjoyed playing around with the borders on the on the Super Game Boy. And of course you've got the different colour palettes as well on this one. So you've got four different rows of colours to choose from. That's the original Game Boy one, so if you want to play it pea green, like how the original Game Boy was, then you've got that option. So this is how it should look, technically. I don't know why the black and white and the green aren't options one and two. Like, the black and white one's hidden somewhere on the second row, and then the green one's hidden... I quite like that one, actually. H. H1. Or B1. I used to use this one quite a lot. Or was it H, maybe? The slightly darker one. Yeah, that one looks quite nice. This is how I recorded my review for uh, Dragonborn, because that was a black and white game. I recorded that one with this sort of brownish, orange colour scheme, which I quite like. I'm doing a lot better this time. I think I got used to his slow movement. It's kind of like Raiden 4, so maybe that's why they called it Raiden, because the ship in Raiden is actually really slow compared to a lot of shooter maps. Now what level are we on? Yeah, you should you should get them. The the only one I've got left to get on the Switch shooter maps wise that I don't have is uh, the Alest collection. And I really wanted to play that Game Gear Alest, but I was a little bit disappointed that they didn't include some of the later Alest games like Robo Alest and Space Mega Force, Super Alest. So I hope they do a follow up to include some of the 16-bit games on it, because I wasn't really that interested in just playing Power Strike on the Master System. I don't know why they chose to do the 8-bit ones. Maybe there's more nostalgia for those in Japan than there is for the 16-bit ones. But Super Alest, one of my favourite games on the SNES, so to see that remade would be amazing. Might end up, end up getting with all the gold coins. I always spend my gold coins straight away, so I, <laughs> I never have any left over to use for discount. I just bought Cult of the Lamb the other day because my girlfriend was playing it, and it seems pretty fun so far. But yeah, any points I had from that will go straight on whatever's next. Yeah, it's expensive. I mean, it's good that it got re-released. It's one that I'm always looking for on, this, on the uh, Master System. I'd love to try it out on the MSX one day as well. Whenever I go to Japan next as well, I want to try and pick an MSX up. I, I did see some last time in Beep, and I was really tempted. And I was also tempted to get an X68000 as well, which was a little bit out of my price range. And it was also extremely heavy. But yeah, I would love to get an MSX at some point. But I don't really have the space for Japanese computers as well yet. Maybe once I do my garage conversion, which I'll be doing at some point in the next year or two, then I can have... I'm planning to have like an arcade set up on one side and then a retro computer set up on the other. And then I can have stuff like the Commodore 64 and the Spectrum set up in there as well. Along with some Japanese computers. I would love to get something like the FM Towns as well. And um, maybe an Atari ST. I've never really looked into that side of like British computing history. So I think that would be really interesting to get into. And a Dragon 32, obviously. Got to support Wales. Oh yeah, I saw that they'd actually converted that G-Mode game as well. They've done that with quite a few Japanese phone releases, for some reason. I guess because there's some nos nostalgia there. They did a Tetris G-Mode release as well, which I was kind of tempted to do. I've got a Japanese account, but I've never actually added any money to it. I've only used it for downloading free stuff. 
What's the easiest way of putting money on the Japanese eShop? Do you have to buy a gift card? Ah! Oh, there was too much going on there. Yeah, the power-ups don't really seem to be doing anything. Yeah, I don't know why Dodon Patchy hasn't. I mean, it was one of the earliest shoot em ups to actually come out outside of Japan. Like, bullet hell shoot em ups, anyway. Daimakura? Is that what it's called? Daimakura? Something like that? Wall of bullets or something? Bullet curtain? You know what I would really love? Talking about bullet hell games. A Toho collection of the actual Toho games on console. I think that would be amazing. Oh, brilliant. Yeah, Dark Witch is really cool. Hey, you found out about it thanks to my channel as well. That's awesome. Yeah, I love the Dark Witch series. Kind of like simplistic Mega Man games. But with cute anime graphics. Yeah, Toho would be so good to get a collection of that. There's some of my all-time favourite games as well, so to have them all in one place would be amazing. I know some of them are on Steam now, but it's not the same. Maybe that would be a good reason to get a Steam Deck, though. I have been looking into getting a Steam Deck, actually. But mainly just because I want to play Trackmania on the Steam Deck. I want to be able to play Trackmania on the go. Because I do spend a lot of time travelling. And I don't really spend that much time at the PC. Especially because I work on it all day. I don't want to be sat there playing on it after work as well, really. So Steam Deck would be cool to be able to take it out with me. Especially as the events are starting to open up again. and I'll probably be at those quite a lot. This year and next year. I was looking at the Iron Neo as well, which is kind of like the Steam Deck competitor. It's more expensive, but it looks a lot more um, handheld friendly, if that makes sense. Ah, oh, really? I just got to the boss and then I died. Uh, how long have we been streaming? Half an wow, 37 minutes already. I really am enjoying this one. <laughs> You've mostly just got shovelware left. Uh, right, think of another shooting game to, to put on this on this list. Our type's already there. Got Raiden, Dodon on Patchy. Let's put S braid on it. Oh no, lettuce numbers. Does it have a full stop? S bra. They'll have to do. Steam Deck seems like a soulless handheld. I think it looks like a horribly clunky handheld. I don't know about soulless, but um, I think it's cool that it exists. Right, let's swap over to the next game. That was a really good game, by the way. So definitely go and check out Incubate's website and pick yourselves up a copy of Wing Warrior or Wing Warriors to give it its full title. Right, now, fingers crossed these work. I think they might be over there, actually. Right, one of them was. We can try this one next. I'll come back onto phone cam so you can see the box. So this was a really weird one. Actually, let me just check that it works first. Else we might have to change plans for the rest of this stream. And I don't think... I don't think the Steam Deck's any competition to Nintendo whatsoever. Um, oh, brilliant, it does work. Yeah, I don't think the Steam Deck is any worry to Nintendo whatsoever because parents won't even understand what the Steam Deck is. You can't buy it in shops. PC and console are completely separate markets. So I really don't think they're in competition with each other, with, with each other at all. I'm really happy that both exist, but in terms of... A competitor to Nintendo? No, I don't think it is. A completely different market. I mean, in my opinion, anyway. That's just how I see it. Right, anyway, so yeah, this 
this game, if you can even call it a game, is called uh, Slowly Fading Into Data. And it has a naked man on the cover. There he is. And he's also there on the, uh, on the front page as well. Um, I think it's supposed to have colour. So let's see what it looks like on the Super Game Boy. Okay, so... Yeah, I don't think the internet is is the actual... Uh, I don't think the internet is a good way of telling what is actually going on in the world with that sort of thing. And plus, the only way you can actually buy a Steam Deck is through Steam or through Valve's website, and the majority of people don't even know how to do that. So I don't think... Yeah, internet is not mainstream. Even though you may think it is. But I bet if you went out and asked people in the street, 90% of them wouldn't know what the Steam Deck was. Or have any interest in it whatsoever. So it is It is a very niche, niche thing. Not that that's a bad thing. It's good that niche things exist. But I'm just thinking about it from a global market point of view. I don't think Nintendo... I don't think it's even on Nintendo's radar. That's how little significance I think it has on the actual console market. Um, anyway. Yeah, the call to the internet's a scary place. Anyway, <laughs> this game is more like a art installation kind of thing. So I'm actually controlling the earth now. So as I press, well, as I just press right, left doesn't do anything. But as I'm pressing right here, the earth's moving. And you can also press B there to for some reason, make it go all glitchy. I don't really know what's going on with that. And yeah, it's still recording. Just making sure, because I'm going to be using these in a video. Lots of cookies on the internet, that's for sure. So yeah, you'll see as we progress through this game how strange it actually is. And there was one bit I got to and I didn't know what to do next, so hopefully you guys can help me out on that. So we'll see. Okay, this bit's really weird as well, so you, again, just hold right, except now you can control a gorilla, and you can press, when you press B this time, he beats his chest, which is really weird, but anyway, let's carry on. The developer said that this linked in with some sort of art website that he's got or something, and there's a deeper meaning to everything, so I presume... I don't really know what the first bit was trying to show, but this bit, I presume, is showing evolution. So you begin as this gorilla, and then you find a book. And then... I guess this is the gaining of knowledge. So now you can press you can press right, or press B to flick through the pages. And I'm going to turn it up a little bit, because I think the music does play a part in this as well. So yeah, this is more of an art piece than a game, but hopefully it'll convey some sort of emotion. Hopefully me talking over it isn't going to ruin the experience. Um, yeah, a bit like 2001. So it doesn't look like anything's happening now, but as I'm pressing down, this pyramid is slowly starting to appear. So, I'm guessing seeing the pyramid is sort of showing how um, the the evolution of civilizations and stuff, and maybe it's also designed like that to show data, because eventually this fills the whole screen. And I'm not really sure the relevance of all the smaller triangles inside or the way it's structured. Maybe there's maybe there's a deeper meaning to this. But yeah, let me know whether you think this is interesting. I really didn't know what to expect coming into this game. And uh, it I thought it would have an instruction book to explain some of this, but it's actually an art book. Which I'll show you in a little bit after we've gone through this. And then hopefully the last game will work as well on here. The Machine. I've been really looking forward to playing that one. Okay, so we've reached the bottom of the pyramid. And now... Yeah, well, I don't really know what this bit is. 
I don't really understand what this is showing. Something is changing each time, slightly. I'm trying to make out what's going on. I don't know. At first I thought it was like an x-ray or something. Or like one of those UV UV cameras or something, but I don't really know. Whatever it is anyway, it's slowly filling up the rest of the screen. Any ideas what this is? It was all made by one person. It was part of his art installation project. Um, someone called Albert Bark Duran, I think. You can go to albertdata.com to find out more. So, actually, maybe once we've played through this, we can have a look. albertdata.com apparently doesn't exist. Let's try slowly fading this later. I don't know what's what's going on here. Okay, it's changed. Now it says chapter one. Oh, that's not good. So, um... I might need to tell him this before he does a wider release, but the uh, the website on the back of the box isn't the actual website that you're supposed to go to. It should be albert-data.com. Anyway, now, now it's pretty cool. Now we can see a little bit more interactivity. So we have this tiny little spaceship here uh, going through the galaxy. So I'm guessing this is like the next stage of evolution. And then we get a little bit of a story here as well. And he's also wrote it wrong on the screen as well. It says Albert dot data here. And it said Albert data on the box and it should actually be Albert hyphen data. <coughs> Hello Albert, do you copy? Hi, hello, yes, loud and clear. We're contacting you from the space station. We're reading your co coordinates as you slowly approach our destination. All metrics look correct and as predicted. However, as you are aware, we need to run a few standard procedures before your arrival. I hope you don't mind. Of course, ready when you are. And then you have to go through this uh, authorization thing. Please select all the squares with the basket. And because I already played this, I know that that is also one. Took me a while to realise why it wasn't going through. And that one there. Is that it? Yeah, there we go. Thank you, Albert. You know, we've had some unfortunate problems before. We can't risk it anymore. Sorry, what problems? And you'll see soon where I got stuck as well, and I might need your help for this, because you have to do some maths. It's, yeah, maths. At half eight at night. On a Monday. This is this looks nice. So now the ship's a bit bigger. I'm going through this asteroid field. I wonder if you can go down through them. Yeah, there's no collision detection. We need to run the second standard procedure now. Mental health test. Albert, over the last few weeks of your journey, how often have you been bothered by the following seven problems? Feeling nervous, anxious, or on edge? Several days, half the days, nearly every day, not at all. Now, I don't know what these different choices actually actually mean, so I guess I'll just press random bits. Not being able to stop or control worrying. Half the days. Worrying too much about different things. Nearly every day. Trouble relaxing. Several days. Being so restless that it's hard to sit still. Half the days. Becoming easily annoyed or irritable. Every day. Feeling afraid as if something awful might happen. Yeah, every day. <laughs> Thank you, Albert. 
Remember, you'll be able to access your test results from Lambda, your robot dog at the space station. Okay. He's very insane, apparently. Moving on. Then we'll get to the space station in a minute. And I couldn't find out how to dock the space station, which is where I was getting stuck. Uh, I think the picture's messing up in the corner. It's making like weird symbols, so hopefully that's not because I'm playing it on the uh, Super NT. We won't come talk to you again until you reach the space station for docking sequence. Oh, don't worry at all. I feel pretty lonely here. It feels good to have some interactions. Let's go through the main points of the mission one more time all together and sign the final consent form. I understand that I will be the first human to experience the process of transmutation and to become pure data. Uh, okay. I understand that during the process of transformation there might be no chance of communication, neither to understand nor make yourself understood. Uh, fingers crossed. I understand that homo homomorphic encryption algorithms are going to be implemented, a type of encryption algorithm designed to allow com computations to be performed on encrypted data without first decrypting it. Uh, I don't understand. Thank you, Halbert! Okay, so apparently it doesn't matter what you choose there. It doesn't matter that you don't have a clue what's about to happen to you. Just accept your fate. I guess there's no alternative. I can't actually go backwards. So, let's carry on. Okay, this is where I didn't understand what was going on. Albert, it's us again. You're reaching the space station. Next step is to deploy the docking sequence. Roger that. Does this look familiar to you at all? No. Hey, Tom Sutton, thanks for the follow. I was about to say, now we might need to take some notes. So I'm going to open Notepad here and write this down because um, it seemed like you needed to do some sort of calculation to know which one to dock into. So, E equals HF. Where E is energy, H is Planck's constant. Okay. And F is frequency. F is frequency. Okay. Yeah, it was actually. I watched all of Love, Death and Robots. It was really good. I love how completely different each one of the stories is. Uh, I think the text broke there. On... Initiate the docking sequence by unlocking all the docks in the correct order. Use the first five decimal digits from the reduced Planck's constant. We repeat, the first five decimal digits from the reduced Planck's constant. So, I might need to do a quick Google, because I didn't do that last time, and I had no idea... I had no idea what I was looking at. Um, uh, uh, the reduced Planck's constant multiplies angri angular frequency. Okay. What is it? Anyone know what the reduced Planck's constant is? Dot dot dot. We will come into contact with you inside, finally. And then you're basically left on your own to figure this out. Um. So... The reduced constant is the abstract concept of Planck's constant divided by 2 divided by pi h divided by 2 times pi. Yeah, but what's... what is it? 1.055 
times 10 to the power of minus 34 j times s or h with an arrow through it I'll try that one one point zero five five I hate how slow this section is. So we need to go and find number one first. One point zero five four five seven one. Uh, okay, so the reduced Planck's constant is pronounced H bar, and it's a frequency measured in hertz. And I'll put the answer in chat so I can uh, I can look at it. So that apparently is the reduced Planck's constant. And this section is called Breathe. Or maybe that's the name of the pause screen. So we need to go find number one first. I told you we'd need to be doing some maths tonight. <coughs> number one. I hate how slow this is. Uh, am I trapped? Okay, there's one. Let's see what number that is. Abandoned. What happened to this dark? Nothing. What do you mean, nothing? Uh, hello? You don't remember, do you? Mm -hmm. Please proceed with the sequence. We're waiting. Okay, so we can't use that one. Come on. This is an abandoned dock. Blah, 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 blah. You can't skip it either. There's definitely some things they could have done to make this a bit more streamlined. But anyway, never mind. Let's keep going. Okay, does that mean that's number five? Have I gone the wrong way? Hmm, that one's not doing anything. That one's not bringing anything up. Oh my god, it feels like the Game Boy's really struggling to process this. Come on! The last bit was fast. Okay, there's nothing up there. I'm pressing A all the time as well, just to see if anything will respond. That's number seven. This is going to take a while. Yeah, maybe they're not culling the stuff that's outside the boundaries of the screen, which is causing it to really stutter. Seems like a big area to be drawn all at once. But yeah, it's definitely making this a lot more sluggish than it should be. Phone number four. Yeah, some of the sprites are moving in the background. First five decimal digits. 
Okay, so you don't need to do the one at the start. Oh my god, I have to do five of these? I can't even get to one. So... Uh, there's the first one. Talk zero, proceed. Is it doing anything? Oh yeah, you think the whole station is a sprite. Maybe that explains why it's so slow. Maybe that's how they got the collision detection to work. Because there wasn't any before, so maybe they don't know that you can just create a collision mesh on the background. So we've done zero, we can tick that one off. Now we're going to find number five. I presume we did zero, it didn't actually say. I hope there's a really good bit after this, because this is painful. This five. Don't tell me it's just going round in a circle. Zero. Five. Okay. There's four up here. Oh, there's nothing there. That's where I got stuck before. Yeah, the Game Boy's memory is being eaten alive right now. Although they didn't... Uh, oh no, seven next. I need to find number four. It's up further up here. They didn't rotate this sprite when it moves up and down. Which is a bit of a disappointment. It'd be nice if it turned with the thrusters. And it'd be nice if you could move in more than just four directions. Because I've definitely seen some where you can move in eight. Not sure what just happened then, but it sounded like something disconnected. But I'm still here. Oh, it's still recording. Good. Okay, come on. There's number four round here. And I'll need to go all the way back round again to get to number five. I wonder how many people have actually got this far in it and not given up. There's number four. Unlock dock number four. Proceed. And then we're going to go back again to get to number five. Might be faster to go around more. Uh, yeah, I suppose without rotating. That's more like how it would look in real life, isn't it? They would just rotate the thrusters. But also, you should have to press up to make it go down, if that's the case. Because you'd be firing the thruster up to make it go down, and push right to make it go left. So, semi-realistic. Um, so what have we done? Zero, five, four. Got to get back around and press 5 again. I hope we've got this right and you didn't need to do the 1. Oh, there is no 1 anyway, is there? So that must be it. Come on. I wish there was a way to fast forward it. Okay, five, again. And now number seven. And then we can go inside. And that's as far as I've got, because I didn't have the patience last night to do, to do this. I thought, if I'm doing this, I'm going to come here on stream and do it, so I have an excuse to actually press on with this. Else I would just give up and play Beat Saber. There's number seven. Yes. Are you going to let me in? Yay, docking sequence complete. Finally. Now we're on to chapter two.
Yeah, that's true as well. The ship wouldn't stop when you let go of the button. Uh, metaphysical terror? Sounds nice. Oh, hey. That must be Albert. Some nice pixel art in this. Not sure what's going on there. Is that his robot dog that the computer was talking about? Kerbal Space. I watched uh, Jacksepticeye and Marco Player play that together. So funny. Okay, what's going on now? Do I need to control anything? Uh, okay, apparently I'm this weird blob of pixels. Can anyone glean any sort of relevance from this? Or is my game just glitched? There's a green dot that comes and goes. Uh, I can't tell if this is broken or if this is some sort of genius art project. Okay, there's something over here. Um, it makes a noise when I touch it. Okay, now it's green. Okay, am I swimming? I look like a weird race car with a tail. Bit of column A, bit of column B. I have no idea what's going on. Now I'm stuck changing shapes. I can't move. Literally, I can't move. Not doing anything. Uh, okay, now I'm allowed to move. Apparently this isn't glitched, this is just how it's supposed to be. Does this mean anything to anyone? Oh, okay. Go left for infinity? I'm so confused. This might be him going metaphysical. Infinity welcomes careful divers. Is that what I'm doing? There's a C there. Do I need to pick that up? I'm kind of in control, but not really. He's sort of also floating around on his own. Okay, the C disappeared and now I bounced up for some reason. And now I can press A to make a weird noise. B does nothing. No, B makes the arrow flash faster. Okay. If I tap B, the arrow flashes faster. And now I've turned into the race car slash diver again. What is going on here? Can anyone make sense of this? Is this just beyond my level of comprehension? There's a green dot... Okay, that says something, if you hold B. Uh, or it's just gibberish. One bit disappeared. I hope the developer watches this and he can fill me in on what the hell am I actually seeing here. Because I have no clue. And I can't move again now. I presume this is supposed to happen. 
Now it's disappeared. Uh, am I going past it now? Okay, it's changed. It says existence. Okay. So when it's just the outlines, you can read it. I feel like I'm going crazy. Now the arrow is saying up. Do I need to do something? It takes ages to go back down. I hope I don't need to go up. Okay, while I'm slowly sinking, I can show you the art book that was in here. Very slowly sinking. Uh, I don't think there was anything else. No, just that. So, um, there's the space station. So yeah, maybe it was just one big sprite. Look at that. If you can see it without the glare. that, whatever that is. There's some sprites. There's the gorilla from the start. And apparently a person too. And some more random sprites there. There's a circuit board for some reason. There's uh there's something across, and then there's some of the still images. If you can see them, there you go. Or just some random pixel art. There's that. Whatever that is. There's the pyramid. And then there's a little thank you note at the end. Um, which is really weird. We are trapped. Trapped in flesh. Bound by... Bound by cognition. I don't really understand what that's about. The perception synthesis. I think. It's all handwritten really uh, squiggly, so I can't quite make out what it says. Yeah, maybe a little bit. Maybe the developer understands what he was trying to do, but I don't think many other people will actually get this. He did say go to his website to understand it some more, but... Uh, I don't really know. It's an experimental, narrative-driven, interactive, storytelling, action, adventure game. And then he goes on to talk about how the Event Horizon uh, Telescope brought the first image of a black hole, so I'm not too sure what relevance that has. Um, apparently the background music is procedurally generated. Um, there's an artist's edition with a white cover. There's a a, what? There's a, a black hole photo being laser etched onto a Game Boy cartridge. I feel like I'm not going to get anywhere with this game. Maybe I should just show you this crazy website instead. See whether you can make sense of that. Um, I really don't think this is going anywhere, but there is more to the game. Try and go up. Okay, something happened then. Okay, something's happening. Finally. I'll show you the website after I've figured out what the hell to do on this. If I can. Okay, something's happening. I've turned into a Metroid. Uh, 
Now I'm turned into the diver again. I've gone black and white again. Oh, okay. Okay, we found something. Now we're on a web, web browser thing. Documents. There's a guy holding someone's hand. There's uh, someone poking something. There's another guy with some gloves on. There's a uh, guy holding a sign with an arrow on. There's a guy painting something. PhD thesis dot PDF. Dissertations on decision making, similarity, constructive judgments, morality, and social dilemmas. And you can't click on any of the other pages. Okay. Let's try read me. Do not go gentle into that complexity. Anything in the recycling bin? Humanemotions.exe Do you really want to empty the bin? It won't let me. This is the weirdest game experience ever. Uninstall existence.exe I don't think I should click that one. SQL.info Password I don't have a password. There's a command line thing. Last login. Time is relative. Albert data at space station something percent PIP install. It won't let me do anything on there. Shall I uninstall human existence? Let's see what the settings cog does first. Credits.info. Okay. I think there's more to the game. I don't think this is the end. Okay. I really want to know what the developer was thinking when he made this. Um, okay. Uninstall existence. Let's do it. Just keep pushing, you hear me? Oh, maybe I can't. So I can't actually do anything on this computer. At all. Okay, I think I'm gaining form, maybe. Because I've got a body and a head now. Okay, now it's gone. So I don't really see the point of why I went all the way down there if nothing's happening. What is going on? Am I supposed to be going up or down? I'll turn back into the car again. Hmm. The developer did tell me that not a lot of people have actually managed to get through all this. I can see why, but let's see whether we can. Um, I'm going to see if I can find the emails he was sending me. Um... Not sure where he messaged me though. It might have been through emails. Okay, I'm still falling. Chat amongst yourselves while I find this. Wow, I have so many emails. Uh, that's it. Artistic gaming project from Barcelona. So I've been speaking to him quite a bit before he actually sent it over. So let's see. I'm a digital artist and researcher in creative technologies. Uh, congrats! I've been following him you on YouTube. Yesterday you released my artistic project. It's an intense audio-visual experience in a retro game format for an 8-bit console. Everything I researched on and explored these last few years on artificial intelligence and music production inside of a Game Boy. Um, please let me know how I can send it to you. Thank you, blah, blah, blah. Uh, 
I hope you find it strange, aesthetically pleasing, thoughtful and deep, and in general I hope it just doesn't leave you indifferent. Some people told me it was helpful for them to dig a bit deeper on previous art and science and tech projects, vestibular underscore one, my artificial muse, the zero gravity band, as they might shed some light to understand the whole concept a bit better. Go to albertbark.com. Okay. Does any of that make any sense to anyone? I'm stuck on the computer thing now, I can't move. I really have no idea what I'm supposed to be doing. I think it should look different. Maybe that's why I can't see what's going on. Uh, that's not a gameplay trailer, that's just a weird visual thing. Hmm. I don't know, this bit loaded okay. There doesn't seem to be anything to do, though. Oh, I'll be sad if I have to give up on it. Because I wanted to see where this was leading. And it's not like there's any um, walkthroughs online or anything, so I can't really have a look to see what I'm supposed to do. I might just have to have to stop if it's not loading properly. I, yeah, like I was saying, I don't know whether this is glitching or whether this is what it's meant to be like. Gameplay trailer, let's have a look. Ah, uh, there's supposed to be. It looks like the background is not loading. So if I show you what I'm seeing on. Um... How will I do that? Window capture. I make this a bit smaller. Ignore the crazy background for this website, but the bit I'm in, I think, was just after this. Yeah, this bit here, so there should be a background like that. And there should be a space suit somewhere. That still happened. But I can't... Maybe I can't see what I'm supposed to pick up. It looks like all the other bits look the same though. Yeah, not sure. So I should be able to go down and pick up a space helmet. But it looks like I'm not able to. Maybe I can try and force my way through the section, so... No, I don't think I'll be able to. Maybe there's just something wrong with my cartridge, because it looked exactly the same as this when I played it yesterday. That's a shame. Well, I guess in that case we'll leave this one here. It looks like I was near the end anyway. Unless that dot is anything. No. 
Okay. That's enough of that. Do we all feel enlightened? Yeah, the rest of the game was fine. So, let's try the machine, which is the other game. Uh, which is... Which is maybe over there. Go full screen. I'm going to go and try and find it. Hmm. Yeah, maybe I'll try showing the creator and see whether it's actually supposed to look like that or not. I don't know where the machine is. But we could try and play Power again, if that's Super Game Boy compatible. It'll be a good test to see if it is as well. Oh yeah, it's got a Super Game Boy border as well, awesome. So, I feel like um, the machine might be in my rucksack because I was away on the weekend. I think I took it with me. So instead, let's check out Power, which I did briefly show last time. And I think I accidentally just knocked this nest in to reset that. Maybe I knocked it and that's why some of the sprites weren't showing up. Yeah, maybe. Maybe there was just something wrong with the cartridge. Anyway, this game's amazing, so enjoy this one. Uh, I'm just going to swap the controls around. So the good thing about this, you can actually swap it so that A and B are like that, like a SNES game. And this game is just brilliant. I love this. I might do a full separate video on this one, just because of how good it is as a homebrew release. Obviously, playing it on the SNES, you don't really get the same colours that you did through playing it on the GameCube, but um, you do get this nice border around it, which is really cool to see. It's kind of made me want to check out my other homebrew games and see which ones have custom borders. Yeah, I think it was loosely based on Trip World. Maybe after this we could play some Trip World. I don't have the original cart, but I've got it on Everdrive. And I think I've actually got a repro of it as well somewhere. Well, I'll try and find the machine after, because I think I know where it is. And I've actually been practicing this a lot. So I kind of know when, when you need to wait for things to happen and when you can just go ahead. Because this game is a lot of memorization to try and figure out when the enemies start and stop. Like here, you need to wait for that to start moving down before you jump over. And the developer did reply to me and he said that power is supposed to be a seed. So I don't know if you remember the other day when we did this stream, we were all questioning what this main character is supposed to be. Well. According to the developer, he's based off of some German food brand's mascot. And he's a seed, I think, he said. So, there you go, there's your answer to that. But yeah, I'm a bit disappointed if that slowly faded into the data game didn't really work properly. And here's the first boss. I love this part of the game as well, where you do this chase here. I think I've got this nailed as well now. 
It's only the underwater level that I've been having trouble with. That I need to try and practice a bit more. I just realised the sound's coming out of the uh, monitor as well as my headphones. So hopefully the sound isn't doubling up for you guys. This kind of reminds me of uh, Mega Man. Damn it. I'm just going to mute the screen so I can't hear it twice. And basically the way the lives work, you've got four lives and that means that you restart at one of the four checkpoints. Um, but if you lose only four lives, you go back to the start again. So There's kind of checkpoints that you can get through the level. Yeah, you couldn't hear the, the sound anyway, that's good. Come on, that last jump there is tricky. You literally got to be pixel perfect. I'm getting Nintendo fun now, though. Can't see it. Camera didn't want to focus. I like that nice little transition at the end there where it goes wavy. No, level two in the cave. Hey, the cave actually looks cooler on the SNES with that dark blue and grey. So this is a game that actually takes advantage of the Super Game Boy's custom colour palette, which is really cool. I don't really know many homebrew games that actually go the extra mile to include this Super Game Boy support, so that's really nice. That's a really nice addition. I'm glad I decided to try this now, because I didn't even know it did. That's a really nice surprise. And the music is awesome as well. Just everything about this is so well polished. Honestly, if this came out back in the day, it could it could pass as a whole retail release, honestly. Ooh, that was close. I have to watch out for the spikes on the ceiling here. You can tell I was practicing this game over the weekend. Because uh, when I streamed this the other day, I really struggled. But I'm trying to get better. There's a, there's a cool boss fight at the end of this level as well. Oh, that's, that looks a bit weird on this. Yeah, first press games did this one. I'll show you the special edition after. It's a really, really nice package. I hope they do more homebrew games. I've only done two, as far as I'm aware. This one and Tobu Tobu Girl. Um, so First Press published it, but the developers, someone called Aigu, Aigu Chen? Something like that, I think. I know they watch these streams, so hi, if you're watching, thanks for making a cool game. And good luck with whatever you're making next, because I know they'd actually already finished this for a while before First Press actually got round to releasing it, because there was all kinds of delays and stuff uh, before it got its physical release. And they were getting a bit irritated at how long it was taking to come out, so I'm sure they, they can breathe a sigh of release. Release? Relief? I guess release that... Relief that it's released! Let's say that, that's a tongue twister. Either way, I bet they're relieved. And so am I, because I waited years for this. So this is another bit that caught me out before. You have to jump here and then jump back through the way to let those things fall down from the ceiling. And for this release, I think there's three different versions. There's the standard, there's the collector's edition, and then there's the limited special edition as well. And First Press has actually given me a giveaway for it. So in my next homebrew video, if you... I haven't really decided how it's going to work yet, but I'll pick out the winners and someone can actually win one of the collector's edition copies of the game. So this is a really cool boss fight, you basically just have to keep dodging these leaves and eventually he gets tired and falls to the ground. I kind of got this mastered as well, and then when he's down here, run up and mash B quickly to be able to hit him. And if you stand in the middle, then it'll fire the feather down, so you can go on the side and jump over him. 
so it's not too difficult. It was a lot harder in the beta version that the, the uh, developer gave me. I think it like, fired a lot more leaves, or they were just in a random pattern. You have to be really fast there. Because sometimes, um, and sometimes you have to do that double jump like that if the leaf's too close to the edge. And it is one hit kill as well, so you have to be really careful. Yeah, everything about this screams quality. I wouldn't be surprised if someone told me Sunsoft made it either. There we go, three hits and he's dead. <coughs> and now we're going into the underwater section, which is as far as I've got. Because this gets really difficult towards the end. Da -da -da -da. So this one's a bit different, you don't have an attack, but you can actually keep pressing the jump button to float up. And while you're floating, you move slightly faster to the left and right, which comes in handy a bit later on in this stage. And just like every good Game Boy, it's full of instant death spikes. Just like every good Game Boy game. And there's spikes here that come out the wall. You can avoid them if you stay on the top like that, but you have to be really careful. And you can see if you if you jump a little bit, you can go a little bit faster. The one gripe I do have about this game, though, is the uh, the collision box is very big for the main character. So basically, anything within that I think it's a 32 by 32 sprite. Basically, anything in that area, if they touch, it's instant death. There's like no um, lenience at all with it. But I seem to be doing pretty well. That's the first area complete. I think each area, each level has four different areas to it. So I think this is area two. I'll try and count them, see if I'm right. So you can see there against that, I was literally up to the last pixel there. And now you've got this thing here firing these bullets out that you need to be careful of. I'm making this look easy, but it's really not. Kind of reminds me of a Donkey Kong Country level. Ah, see? You can see how close the collision detection is. And you only get four lives, and there's a timer as well, so it's a very unforgiving game. Ah! I've lost my streak now. It's a very old school platformer. In a good way, I do like these kind of games. I always get really scared when I get to this bit. That was close. Oh my god. <laughs> I woke up the difficulty. The difficulty heard me. Okay, gotta be careful here. It might be easier to try and do it from from floating. And see how you have to jump there to be able to get through in time. I do love it though, they've done a fantastic job with the game. Ooh, just had enough time to get through there. If I remember right, this the third section coming up is actually easier than this one. Uh, for some reason. And then the boss, I just couldn't get past. It's like an octopus that fires bombs, and you have to try and direct it into the bombs. <laughs> ah, that was close again. This is like Donkey Kong Country turned up to 11. But yeah, this section here I think is easier, at least if I remember right. Or maybe it just feels easier because you're moving more. Oh god, that bit's scary. Oh man, the concentration right now. Waiting for that fish to go. And the bullet. 
Uh. Oh, I didn't even see those spikes there. That was close. Uh, there's another one! Oh my god, that was close as well. And that. Maybe that bit isn't easier. Oh my god, okay, I got through. No. This, I could not figure out. Oh, no. And that's well. Right, I've only got one life left. I can do it. So, he drops a bomb. But also, you have to watch out for those jellyfish. And, uh, yeah, if the bomb blows up like that before he gets to it, then, then it's just no good. I don't think there's anything you can do to move the bomb around or anything. Ah, oh, great. Wow, that's it. You only get one chance. Okay, now we're back to the start of the water area. Do you see how, uh... How crazy this is. Oh, cool. Yeah, I saw he was doing um, swaps with developers. So that's great. What's what's your game? I don't know whether I know that one. Send me a link to it on Twitter. I'll check it out. I've been trying to keep up with all of these releases, but there's just so many. I'm really starting to struggle. And I have people every day DMing me, telling me to go and check their games out. I'm so sorry, I just... I can't look at everything. I have a job. If I could spend all day looking at homebrew games, I would. Fido's Magic Tiles. Is that one that Incubate's publishing? Or is that a different Magic Tiles game? I remember something called Magic Tiles, which they said they were going to send by. So, uh, that could be it. Still waiting for a game called The Year After, which the, uh, the developer said should have arrived like three months ago now. So I'm not sure what's going on with that one. And I keep seeing some up on eBay and they're like 300 plus quid now, which is insane. So I hope it hasn't got lost in the post or anything. really worried about dying because every time I die it's one less chance to tackle the boss at the end of the level. Do you guys have any idea how I can defeat the boss? Oh cool, you're doing it self-published. Well, let me know when it's ready. I'll be happy to take a look at it. Sounds great, I love Panel de Pan. There was a similar homebrew game that came out a few years ago called Into the Blue. Have you seen that one? Oh, that was risky. Doing that twice. Ah, and that was... Oh, no. I don't think I'm going to be able to do this. We've got a few more continues though, so maybe. But yeah, how's uh, how's development going on the game? Is it going well? What are you using to program it in? It's done! Oh, fantastic. you just got to do the publishing now then. Nice. I was trying to learn GBDK a while ago. I don't know if you know, but the, the magazine called Wireframe had a Game Boy developer on there for a few issues, and he was writing a tutorial series. So I was slowly following that, but I haven't done the latest bit yet. 
I used to do it on the train up to Edinburgh, but I don't work there anymore, so I don't need to... I don't really have that amount of free time in one go to dedicate to programming these days. I need to, like, just book a hotel somewhere just, just to program or just to work on something without any distractions. I just have so many things going on, I don't know how to focus on anything. But I would love to get back into programming, I do enjoy it. I think this was programmed in ZGB, which is kind of like GBDK, but with a few extra libraries to make it easier to make platformers. Which they, uh, they definitely put to good use in this, although they could have made it a little bit easier. I really miss making games and programming though. I wish I could do it more often. But it's either that or make videos, and I do prefer making videos. Out of the two. Yeah, it's so satisfying when you get something right in programming, isn't it? I love it. It takes a while to get your head around the concepts. I used to hate it. Um, back in college and uni. I actually did programming for a year at university and I dropped out to swap over to design because I just couldn't get my head around it. But then, um, since I started my office job, I started doing some programming there and I really got back into it. And I wish I had the knowledge I did now back at uni because I would have stuck with programming and been a lot better at it. But it is what it is. I enjoyed learning all the design stuff and the narratology. Your brother programs, but you can't understand it. It does take a long time to wrap your head around the, the logic. And the syntax even more than the logic. It's worth, it's worth sticking with though, because it is really rewarding. And if you know art and programming, then you've basically got the ultimate the ultimate two skills, then. You, then you can do whatever you want. Then you can make a whole game on your own, basically. Uh, don't really know a good way of explaining how to start programming, though, apart from... Just... Well, the way I learned was... Through having projects at work and not really having a choice. Um, there is a programming language called Scratch, which was made by MIT, and that's like a introduction to programming with a more visual interface, so you can understand like how the for loops are combined together and how to make while loops and if statements and things like that in a really visual manner, so it helps you understand how the different parts of the code and the function blocks link together, which might be a good starting point. Um, you can use it in Stencil as well to make games. But to be honest, I, I made my first game in Stencil and I don't really think it helped with programming that much. There's a good course on YouTube you can watch, uh, which is a free, a free Harvard education thing called CS50, which is a great introduction uh, to computer science in general as well as coding. So I definitely recommend that, that helped me understand a lot of the structures. Um, but apart from that, it's basically picking something you want to do and just keep keep working at it every day. And you'll just start to understand things slowly. And don't worry about object-oriented programming if you're going to be using GBDK it doesn't use that in C, so that might just confuse you even more, unnecessarily. Yeah, don't expect it to be perfect, and don't get frustrated if something doesn't work the first time. And learn how to ask questions as well online, like learn how to express what the issue is and what you've tried to do to fix it, because people on Stack Overflow will be a lot more receptive to answering you then, if you've actually, if you actually explain it well and 
seem like you've done a bit of research beforehand, rather than just blindly asking, why doesn't this work? <clears throat> oh man, I'm not doing very well. But I hope you enjoyed my programming lecture. <laughs> Closest you got to making a game was with a point and click creator. Is that something like Click Team Fusion or Game Maker? Construct? I've used all them at various points. I started out making games in PowerPoint. <laughs> in fact, if you ever look back on my channel and look for a video called something like I found these terrible old PowerPoint games, then you can see some of the stuff I made as a kid, which is hilarious and awful. But I was so glad I found them. I found a bunch of old floppy disks and they had all my old PowerPoint games on. Well, some of them. <laughs> You've seen it. It's hilarious. That weird backwards speaking magician. I remember being so proud of that one. <laughs> oh, and if you want a really good YouTube series on making games, have a look at a channel called Clicks Philip. He did a fantastic, like, 10, no, maybe even 15 part series called The Game Making Journey. And it's like his growing up with Click Team Fusion and how he progressed. He didn't really move away from Click Team Fusion or Project Click or whatever it's become now. Click Games. But it's still a really fascinating watch. And there's a load of great indie game documentaries as well, which I highly recommend watching. And they definitely helped inspire me uh, when I was starting out. Well, after I'd started out, because back in college and uni, there weren't any indie game documentaries. That was before Indie Game the movie came out, and no one really cared. So it's crazy how much things have grown since then. And it's crazy to think that I went to college to learn how to make games before even things like Super Meat Boy and Braid had even released. So, it's a shame I didn't stick with it more, because I'm sure I could have made something good by now. But it is what it is. It was either dedicate many years of my life to something that maybe people will never play, or make a video every week and get loads of people, you know, interested in what I do that way. And then maybe make another game in the future. And actually have an audience. Ah, no! Man, I didn't even get back to the boss. Right. Final attempt. Adventure Game Studio? I've not heard of that one. Is it a 2D engine or a 3D one? I used to have one called 3D Game Studio, which was kind of bad looking back on it, but I really enjoyed it at the time. And there was another one called... Dark something? Dark Basic? Which was more of a complete programming package, which I really couldn't understand as a kid. At all. Although it had a really cool demo. Which I enjoyed like going around. It was like some cave that you had to go through. It was showing off how it can do like 3D graphics using DirectX. But I just enjoyed looking at the walls of this cave like shift around as you were moving through it. Made for 2D point and point games. That's cool. Sort of like Monkey Island style. Like an old Sierra game. There's a few point and click games being made for the Game Boy actually. In uh, in GB Studio, because it's really easy to import images. Right, I'm really trying to concentrate this time because I've got all five lives. Oh, that was close. Maybe the collision detection isn't the entire sprite then? Maybe there's like one 
one frame that you've got of leeway. Ah, oh, God, that was close again. Oh yeah, I just realised I forgot to put the stream in Discord. This is the easier section, or at least I said it was easier. This level is brutal though, it really is. I'm dreading to think what the next one's going to be like. Can I make it over in one? Yes. Ah, that was close. Stay in between those. I love that little attention to detail where he blows that bubble out of his snorkel. <sighs> Dead again. God damn, this is crazy. I think this is a case of the developer getting too good at his own game and constantly making it more difficult to make it more enjoyable for him to play through, thus causing it to be a lot more difficult for a regular um, user. I know that is a big problem in game development. The developer can get too used to their own game. And then they just keep increasing the difficulty. Okay, we've done it. Now, how the hell am I supposed to stay alive here? And you have to watch out for the squids as well. I don't understand how I'm supposed to get him to go back there fast enough. Come on! Yes, come down here. Oh, okay. Maybe it only goes off if you're close enough to it. So maybe the idea is to get him... Chase him around. I'm worried I'm going to run out of time. Drop a bomb then. That's what you're supposed to do. Oh, it's already there. Okay, okay, go, 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 go. Yes, that's how you do it. Okay. Okay, I get it now. So, follow me down here. Yeah, okay, that's two. Yeah, we've got this. I'm still worried about those, uh, those squid things. Come on, this way. This way, this way. Yeah, we did it! Yes, now we're back on land. That wasn't as difficult as I thought it was. Okay. Oh man, my hand hurts now. That was... That was, uh, extreme. Man, I'm getting cramp in my fingers with this controller. Okay, now I'm scared. Whoa, 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 he's fast. And you can't attack up there. Wow, well, okay. Oh my god, it gives you like one second to attack. Oh god, this is scary. Oh, and the, the poo can go under the platforms as well, great. God, all these enemies give you, like, one pixel to attack them. Okay, we... Oh, I thought that was going to be the second section. Ah! Mole. Okay, you can attack Mole. I'm scared, I'm scared. Can we attack the bats? Okay, you've got to time it so you can jump from... that side to that side. Oh no, I'm running out of time. Oh, I didn't see the spike there! No, that's not fair. Wow. Wow. You have to be literally pixel perfect. No, that's not fair! Jeez. Uh, 
Jeez, this is crazy. I'm dreading what the boss at the end of this one's like. If I finish this though, this will be a proper achievement. remember that's not the end of this area. I know what to do with these bats this time though. Ah, not that! No! No, we're not doing it again. I'm gonna go and find my rucksack and see whether I can find the machine, which is the other game. And I'll try and do this off stream another time. Right, bear with me one second. Right, so I think it's in here somewhere. Maybe. Yeah, there it is. So, hopefully we can play this. This is the other game. The machine. So, let's turn that off. And fingers crossed that this is original and Game Boy compatible. So, power on. And hope for the best. Anything? Maybe not. Maybe I'll have to do this at some other point when I can get the HDMI stuff to work again. No, that's not doing anything. Uh, let's see if I can find any interesting Game Boy games. Let's see, can you see this? Can I pick it up without it collapsing? Here's all my Game Boy games. I've got them in this in this big tray. So uh, let's see if we can find something interesting. I'm kind of sad I haven't got my big Game Boy display cabinet anymore. Dreamland 2. I did find out recently that the UK version of Dreamland 2 is actually really rare. So, because it says UKV there. That's actually a really rare version of Dreamland 2, because most of them are just European. Um, I'm trying to find Trip World, because I've got... That's something cool that I kind of want to play more of, Rodland. Maybe we can play a bit of that. I might just change the name of this to just be like a... Just a Game Boy stream. Um... I want to play Trip World though, so bear with me. I was playing this recently. Dragon Warrior Monsters 2, which is an awesome game. Uh, where are my repo? Maybe they're not here. Maybe we'll play some Rodland, that works, on the uh, Super Game Boy. Maybe we can do some sort of Game Boy stream separately in the future. Let's see if this worked. Hmm, nothing's working. 